We just learned how to factor trinomials with a leading coefficient of one. We will now begin to learn how to factor trinomials when the leading coefficient is not one. It's important to remember the first step in factoring is always to look for the greatest common factor. So looking at the first example, we have two x squared minus eight x minus 42. Because the leading coefficient is not one, we do not factor the expression by looking for the factors of negative 42 that add to negative eight. Again, the first step is to factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is two. Let's first write each term as a product with a factor of two. Let's write two x squared as two times x squared minus, let's write eight x as two times four x minus, let's write 42 as two times 21. While this step is optional, notice how it does show the greatest common factor of two as well as what's left after we factor out the greatest common factor of two. Factoring out two leaves us with a factor of x squared minus four x minus 21. Now notice how the trinomial inside the parentheses does have a leading coefficient of one and therefore we can factor the trinomial further if we can determine the factors of negative 21 that add to negative four. So if this does factor further, we will have a factor of two and then two binomial factors. The factors of x squared are x and x. And now the terms in the second positions will be the factors of negative 21 that add to negative four. And since negative seven times positive three is equal to negative 21, and negative seven plus three is equal to negative four, the two factors we need are negative seven and positive three, which means one binomial factor is x minus seven, and the other is x plus three. And now we have the trinomial factored completely. So again, it's important to remember the first step in any factoring problem is always to factor out the greatest common factor. Next, we have five x squared minus 35 x plus 50. Again, because the leading coefficient is not one, we do not begin by looking for the factors of 50 that add to negative 35. The first step is to factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is five. And let's write each term as a product with a factor of five. Five x squared is equal to five times x squared minus 35 x is equal to five times seven x plus 50 is equal to five times 10. And now we will factor out the greatest common factor of five. Factoring out five, we're left with a factor of x squared minus seven x plus 10. And once again, notice how the trinomial inside the parentheses has a leading coefficient of one, and therefore we can factor further if we can find the factors of positive 10 that add to negative seven. So if this does factor further, we will have a factor of five and then two binomial factors. The factors of x squared are x and x. And that's work on determining the factors of 10 that add to negative seven. And since negative five times negative two is equal to positive 10 and negative five plus negative two is equal to negative seven, the two factors we need are negative five and negative two which means one binomial factor is x minus five and the other is x minus two. And once again, we now have the trinomial factored completely. Next, we wanna factor four x squared plus 36 x plus 56. The greatest common factor among all three terms is four. Let's write each term as a product with a factor of four. Four x squared is equal to four times x squared plus 36x is equal to four times nine x, plus 56 is equal to four times 14. Factoring out the greatest common factor of four, we have four times a factor of x squared plus nine x plus 14. Once again, notice how the trinomial inside the parentheses has a leading coefficient of one, and therefore we can factor further if we can determine the factors of 14 that add to nine. So if this does factor further, we will have a factor of four and then two binomial factors. The factors of x squared are x and x. And now let's determine the factors of 14 that add to nine. And since seven times two is equal to 14, 
and seven plus two is equal to nine. The two factors we are looking for are positive seven and positive two, which means one binomial factor is x plus seven, and the other is x plus two. And let's take a look at one more example. Here we have four x cubed plus 16 x squared minus 20 x. Well notice how here, the greatest common factor is not just four, the greatest common factor is four x, because all the terms also have a common factor of x. So let's write the terms as a product with a factor of four x. Four x cubed is equal to four x times x squared plus 16 x squared is equal to four x times four x minus 20 x is equal to four x times five. Again, this step is optional, but it does show the greatest common factor as well as what's left after we factor out four x. Factoring out four x leaves us with a factor of x squared plus four x minus five. And once again, notice how the trinomial inside the parentheses has a leading coefficient of one, and therefore we can factor the trinomial if we can determine the factors of negative five that add to positive four. So if we can factor further, we will have a factor of four x and then two binomial factors. The factors of x squared are x and x. And now to determine the factors of negative five that add to positive four, since negative one times positive five is negative five, and negative one plus five is equal to positive four, one binomial factor is x minus one, and the other is x plus five. So it's important to remember the first step in factoring is always to look for the greatest common factor. Now sometimes there won't be a greatest common factor other than one, but when there is, it can often simplify the factoring process. I hope you found this helpful.